Excellencies, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sandra Bialystok, I'm part of the Aleph staff, and I'm very pleased to be your moderator today. Before I give the floor to Madame Laurence Descartes, President Directrice du Louvre, I have just four housekeeping points to share with you. First, a reminder that there's simultaneous translation for everybody in the room, as well as those following us online in English, French, and Arabic. Second, because we have a very full agenda today with many distinguished speakers, I ask you to please keep your remarks to the allotted time. Finally, oh, not finally, third. In respect of health and safety regulations, please do keep your masks on at all times, unless of course you're coming up to the podium to give your remarks, at which time you can take it off. And finally, we have a slight programming change today. We are pleased to also welcome to the floor in the opening section, the Assistant Director General for Culture of UNESCO, Ernesto Otan. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Madame Laurence Descartes, Présidente Directrice du Musée du Louvre. Monsieur le vice-président de la Commission européenne, Vice President of the European Commission, Minister, Minister of Culture, Minister of Europe and External Affairs, Ministers, Excellences, dear Thomas Kaplan, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it's a great honor and a great pleasure to welcome you here to the Louvre in this a place with which you're very familiar because five years ago, the International Alliance for the Protection of uh, uh, Cultural uh, Heritage in Conflict Areas, ALIF, held its inaugural conference here. France and the United Arab Emirates were quickly joined by other states, in particular Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Luxembourg, China, and Morocco. And very rapidly, Alif became a key player in the protecting world cultural heritage. In this wonderful setting, we all realize that monuments are not just stones, but they are a lively and vibrant testimony to our memories. These monuments uh, talk about the present and not just the past. The relevance of this meeting uh, with art or an individual meeting with art is necessary more than ever today. Uh, the underpinnings of our cultural thinking are called into question. Heritage provides us with meaning and with a compass. It is up to us to protect this heritage particularly in conflict areas uh, where terrorist groups uh, do not spare humanity nor culture. We have to ensure that heritage and works of heritage are not just what we have inherited, but what we leave to future generations to make sure that it's not just the link with the past, but also with the future. This is a difficult task, dear Thomas Kaplan. Alif uh, has taken on this task uh, and we are full of respect for the work you have done. You've worked in more than 30 countries and 150 projects. Alif uh, takes into account the local community and local experts. There are two iconic projects that have been carried out together with the teams of the Louvre, the restoration of the museum in Mosul. Uh, which is uh, the uh, sister exhibition of what you exhibition of what you can see here, and also the rehabilitation of the National Museum of Beirut, which was affected by the explosion in August 2020 in the port. Alif has been successful, and everybody recognizes this success. This generates a virtuous circle, and many countries wish to join the founding members. 
there's growing international mobilization in favor of heritage, and this gives us hope. It gives hope to those living in areas of conflict. The Louvre has amazing archaeological collections and internationally recognized expertise. It will continue to work alongside Alif at, in the service of threatened heritage, because conserving, protecting, and handing on to the future is our mission. I wish you all a very successful conference. وهذه الممارسات الممنهجة هي تعتبر إمحاء للآخر إلغاء للآخر les djihadistes avaient une intention de démolir cet emblème. Ce que Daesh a voulu faire, c'est nier l'identité collective. Il fallait à ce message de peur et de mort euh, opposer un message d'espoir et de reconstruction. I think that Dostoevsky was right when he said that beauty will save the world. نحن اليوم أمام منعطف تاريخي نحتاج فيه إلى التعاون سويا لحفظ تراث وثقافات العالم. Alif is a new kind of international instrument. It functions in an incredibly reactive way with a speedy response to requests from the ground. The core of how we work is the Aleph spirit. Action, action, action. Merci, Madame la Présidente Directrice. Thank you, Madam President Directress. And now it's a great honor for me to welcome the President of the French Republic, Emmanuel Macron. Mesdames et Messieurs, permettez-moi tout d'abord de vous souhaiter la bienvenue à cette deuxième conférence des donateurs d'Alif, l'Alliance internationale pour la protection du patrimoine dans les zones de conflit. Alif qui fête cette année ses cinq ans. Je remercie Madame Laurence Descartes, présidente du Musée du Louvre, pour son accueil et je me réjouis que nous puissions nous retrouver dans la salle Corsabad, qui témoigne à la fois de la force des liens historiques et culturels entre la France et ce pays ami qu'est l'Irak, mais aussi du chemin parcouru ensemble depuis la première conférence des donateurs en mars 2017, qui s'était tenue ici même. J'ai souhaité être à vos côtés aujourd'hui, car pour la France, la question de la protection du patrimoine est plus que jamais essentielle. Elle correspond à ce que nous sommes, une nation qui ne renonce jamais à sa part d'universel et qui, ainsi, entend défendre partout dans le monde les œuvres de l'esprit humain. C'est dans cet esprit qu'avec quelques-uns d'entre vous, nous avons créé Alif autour d'un objectif. Réagir avec détermination à la destruction massive du patrimoine par le terrorisme et la guerre, que ce soit au Sahel comme au Proche ou Moyen-Orient. 
Il y avait alors avec nous les Émirats Arabes Unis, qui ont cofondé Alif avec la France, l'Arabie Saoudite, qui a apporté un soutien déterminant, le Koweït, le Luxembourg, la Chine et le Maroc, qui ont appuyé cette initiative avec constance, la Suisse, pays hôte, Monaco, depuis, pour son concours sur ce sur projet, et naturellement, les donateurs privés. Tom Kaplan, que je remercie une fois encore, et les fondations Gandour pour l'art, et Andrew Mellon, et que chacun ici soit pleinement remercié. Je n'oublie pas évidemment l'apport déterminant de Monsieur le ministre Jack Lang comme premier représentant de la France à Alif. Le bilan d'Alif en quelques années d'existence est au rendez-vous. En moins de quatre ans, Alif a soutenu près de 150 projets concrets dans une trentaine de pays. Alif a su démontrer son utilité, sa réactivité, en un mot son efficacité aux côtés du travail fait par l'UNESCO et sa directrice générale. Peu y croyez, vous l'avez fait, nous l'avons fait. C'est fort de ces succès que nous devons construire et préparer demain. Déjà grâce à Alif et les dizaines d'opérateurs internationaux ou locaux avec lesquels la Fondation travaille au quotidien, les musées de Mossoul en Irak ou d'Amar au Yémen sont en cours de réhabilitation. Ils viennent s'ajouter à des programmes de restauration menés à leur terme, comme celui du musée de Raqqa dans le nord-est de la Syrie. D'autres projets sont terminés, comme le monastère de Mar Benham, au sud de Mossoul, ou proche de l'achèvement comme Dar Tutunji, magnifique maison patricienne ottomane de la vieille ville de Mossoul, et d'autres sont en cours, parmi lesquels la ville parte de Hatra ou l'arche de Ktesiphon en Irak, le minaret de Jam avec l'UNESCO et la forteresse de Baya Issar avec la fondation Aga pour la culture en Afghanistan, ou encore le tombeau des Askia au Mali. Après les terribles explosions d'août 2020 dans le port de Beyrouth, Alif a ainsi montré son agilité, a apporté son savoir-faire. Le musée national, le musée sur Soc, les cathédrales Saint-Georges grec orthodoxe et maronite, la bibliothèque nationale et la bibliothèque orientale de l'université Saint-Joseph ont ainsi pu rapidement bénéficier du soutien d'Alif. Mesdames et messieurs, pour que la promesse qui est née avec Alif continue de se concrétiser au-delà de 2022, nous avons besoin de vous. Pourquoi donner à Alif Pour léguer à notre jeunesse. D'abord pour léguer à notre jeunesse ce patrimoine qui n'est pas seulement un ensemble de pierres, mais ce qui, nous disant là d'où nous, nous venons, nous permet aussi de comprendre qui nous sommes, de nous projeter, de construire. Le patrimoine est un vecteur de paix, mémoire des peuples, le patrimoine contribue non seulement au développement durable des territoires, mais aussi parce qu'il touche aux identités individuelles ou collectives, au processus de réconciliation, à notre capacité à vivre ensemble en paix. Il est aux côtés de la lutte contre le changement climatique et de la préservation de la planète, de la promotion de l'éducation et de la connaissance, l'un des principaux vecteurs de transmission de notre part d'humanité. Ce n'est pas un hasard si les terroristes entendent détruire le patrimoine, éradiquer toute diversité culturelle et religieuse. Et je pense naturellement à la souffrance, aux dévastations qu'ont subi les musulmans, premières victimes de ces exactions, mais aussi plusieurs communautés au Sahel, au Moyen-Orient, comme les chrétiens d'Orient, les yézidis et bien d'autres minorités. Parce qu'à chaque fois, en effaçant le passé, ils entendent nier ce que nous sommes, des êtres à la fois unis par une même humanité et riches d'une irréductible singularité. Un tout, mais aussi un ensemble de minorités qui façonnent une force dénommée diversité. Il est évident que le travail fait patiemment en faveur du patrimoine des minorités témoigne d'un renouveau toujours possible. L'universel humaniste auquel nous croyons, ce n'est pas l'uniformité auquel Quelques-uns voudraient nous ramener. Les menaces sont là, plus que jamais. Aux quatre coins de notre planète, notamment au Caucase, dans la Corne de l'Afrique, en Afghanistan et dans bien d'autres endroits. La folie dévastatrice qui nie la diversité des identités, la possibilité d'un dialogue entre les peuples, les cultures, les religions, les civilisations progresse et entend tout détruire. La meilleure réponse à ces projets de haine, 
et de protéger notre patrimoine. Car protéger les pierres, les œuvres d'art, les sites culturels, les paysages naturels, c'est protéger ce qui nous lie, ce qui nous tient. Je me réjouis à cet égard et veux saluer ici la présence de Marguerite Iskinas, vice-président de la Commission européenne, de l'importance désormais accordée par l'Union européenne à la dimension patrimoniale de son action extérieure. Je tiens également à saluer les représentants des pays européens qui marquent par leur présence à cette deuxième conférence des donateurs d'Alif un réel intérêt pour la protection du patrimoine. La France a placé sa présidence du Conseil de l'Union européenne sous l'égide notamment de la notion d'appartenance. Or, il n'y a pas d'appartenance sans histoire, sans culture commune, il n'y a pas d'appartenance sans patrimoine. Lorsque Notre-Dame de Paris a brûlé il y a près de trois ans, le monde entier s'est ému aux côtés du peuple français. Et si, catholique ou non, nous avons tous ressenti une peine, une tristesse, c'est bien parce que le patrimoine est une part de nous-mêmes. Un extraordinaire élan de générosité a permis d'engager la reconstruction de Notre-Dame. Et c'est aujourd'hui le même élan que je souhaite voir se lever pour la protection du patrimoine dans les zones de conflit ou post-conflit, afin de donner à Alif, qui a fait ses preuves, comme je viens de le rappeler, les moyens de continuer son action pour les cinq années à venir. Je sais que certains d'entre vous ne pourront pas se prononcer avant quelques mois, et je le comprends. Mais votre présence, votre soutien aujourd'hui, témoigne d'une prise de conscience qui a émergé, d'un vent qui s'est levé. Pour ce qui concerne la France, je suis heureux aujourd'hui d'annoncer que nous renouvellerons notre contribution à Alif pour un montant de 30 millions de dollars américains. Enfin, je remercie les membres du Conseil de la Fondation d'Alif pour leur soutien, tout particulièrement le prince Bader. Je veux saluer le travail de toute l'équipe d'Alif, et notamment Valérie Froland, directeur exécutif, Jean-Luc Martinez et ses collègues du comité scientifique, les deux vice-présidents, Barry Zakari et Mohamed Al-Moubarak, qui travaillent main dans la main, et bien sûr, le président d'Alif, Tom Kaplan, pour son engagement sans faille. Vous pouvez compter sur moi et sur la France pour poursuivre cette tâche si importante qui consiste, par le patrimoine, à réconcilier les peuples entre eux, et parfois les peuples avec eux-mêmes. Merci. We send President Macron many thanks for his unfailing support. And now I'd like to invite His Excellency Jean-Yves Le Drian, French Minister of Europe and Foreign Affairs. Monsieur le Ministre. Monsieur le, le Vice-Président de la Commission européenne. Vice-President of the European Commission, dear Margaritas, Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, ministers. Monsieur le Président de l'Institut du Monde Arabe, cher Jacques. President of the Arab Institute, dear Jacques. President, Directress of the Louvre Museum, Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, together with the French President, who, whom we've just listened, and with my colleague Rosaline Bachelot, who is Minister of Culture, I would like to welcome you to this second donors' conference of the International Alliance for the Protection of Heritage in Conflict Areas. I would also like to thank Laurence Descartes for hosting us in this iconic setting. We are here in the remains of the royal palace that was in Khorsabad in the north of what is today Iraq. We are here in the Louvre, which is also or was a royal palace, which has now become a universal museum and the museum of the French people. The Louvre shows uh, the monumental bulls. Uh, they're winged, uh, but with the uh, faces of humans. Uh, they were buried for 2,500 years in the sands of Nineveh. These bulls uh, were rediscovered in the 19th century by the French consul in Mosul. Show how very strong the ties are between France and the Middle East. Here we are gathered this afternoon 
with a single mission, which is to protect our heritage, uh, which binds us all, the ties to culture and our past. It is our shared heritage, and we must protect it together whenever it is threatened. And the French president has just pointed out that that was the goal when the Alifa was set up as a res common response to the frenzy of destruction that was a threatening, remarkable works that testified to the culture of generations over and beyond different cultures and religions. They were in danger, and Alifa was a new form of multilateralism based on action, a uh, form of multilateralism based on results that would be agile, responsive, working closely with local communities to help stabilize and rebuild areas in conflict, uh, to protect a heritage that was threatened, the men and women uh, who would lose knowledge, understanding, identity because of their destruction to try and stop the illegal trafficking of cultural goods, which is funding terrorism. And indeed, there will be a high-level conference on this subject tomorrow uh, to enable tourism to resume in these uh, areas that have suffered so much to contribute to international peace and stability. In other words, to protect our shared cultural heritage. International diplomacy is often wrongly called a soft power, as though it were not in touch with serious issues, but it provides us with levers that can have a real impact on the world at large and the life of communities. The Alif venture has proven successful in just a few years. It has supported 150 concrete projects in some 30 countries in four continents. And the French president has just cited some remarkable examples of what has been done. I would like to congratulate Valérie Frelon on the work that he has done. He's a diplomat, and he's also the executive director of the foundation and also his whole team. I would like to echo the thanks expressed by the French uh, president uh, to uh, Thomas Kaplan and uh, Mohamed El Moubalek uh, and Bazira Koubali, the minister Noura Al-Qaidi from the United Arab Emirates. Prince Badr. Oh, I had the pleasure of talking to him during this morning, and Jack Long, who has been unstinting in his energy and uh, has provided the sport, support of the Institut du Monde Arabe by organizing an exhibition just a few years back that uh, heightened awareness uh, to these issues, and uh, Jean Louis Martinez. Jean-Luc Martinez, who is the chair of Alif's scientific committee. Together, we have succeeded in creating a new international instrument that can mobilize a new uh, forms of funding, both public and private, to respond to the urgent threats uh, uh, on cultural heritage. This protection is indispensable. Protecting our heritage uh, is key. It requires a lot of funding, if only to restore the old town of Mosul, which uh, requires a lot of money. And also, given the many conflicts uh, in Africa, the Caucasus, all over the world, uh, there will be further urgent needs in the future. In these conflicts, the her our heritage is uh, not just the victim of collateral damage, but sometimes, as we saw in the film in the opening, it's targeted explicitly. It's instrumentalized for reasons of propaganda. And I'm thinking in particular at the moment of what's happening in Afghanistan. And so we count on your support. We count on you to join us, to renew your pledge to Alif as of today or as soon as is possible.
We need to remain united and mobilize so that Alif can continue to carry out its effective targeted actions between now and 2027. I can assure you that France is fully committed, the French president has made this clear, and as are European countries. France uh, is currently president of the Council of the European Union, and this for six months, and it's within the frame of this European-wide responsibility that we wanted to give a new momentum to Alifa by organizing in Paris the second donors conference. This is decisive. And we have here the Vice President of the European Commission, many ministers of European countries, which testifies uh, to uh, the importance we in Europe attach uh, to this project. Together with the Commission, with the uh, uh, representative of uh, external uh, policies, we want uh, to make uh, the protection of heritage a pillow of uh, diplomacy in Europe and beyond, in a world where it really is indispensable to build a, together a new form of humanism based on this heritage, which testifies of the diversity of our civilizations and the universality of our shared history. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister. I would like to invite His Excellency Margarita Skinas, Vice President of the European Commission. Madame la Ministre, uh, chère Roseline. Minister de Roseline, Minister Sir, de Jean Yves, Ministers of member countries from partner and countries, Madam President, Directors of the Louvre, Ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, on behalf of the European Commission, I would like to congratulate Alif for the outstanding work that has been accomplished up until now. More than 150 projects to prevent destruction, protect and restore tangible and intangible heritage. You have undertaken these projects in 22 countries. The donors' conference this afternoon is essential to guarantee the continuation of our shared goal, which is to protect cultural heritage. Tangible and intangible cultural heritage is a great strength, and it symbolizes social cohesion and dialogue. It is invaluable for lasting peace, pre preventing violent extremism, and in the battle against disinformation. In 2005, with the Barcelona process, cultural heritage was recognized as having a role of reconciliation, social cohesion, and job creation. Today, 17 years on, Cultural heritage is one of the strategic priorities of the EU's political agenda when it comes to external action. During armed conflicts, cultural heritage is all too often targeted deliberately by the warring parties in order to destroy the identity of a community, its culture and its resilience. Unfortunately, we have seen this in particular in Iraq, but also in Yemen, in Afghanistan, in Syria, and in Mali. Nonetheless, our experience has shown that reconstruction and rest restoration of cultural heritage can help bring about healing for the peoples who were targeted. Protecting and rebuilding cultural heritage also has huge potential to stimulate local economies by creating new job opportunities, particularly for young people. We are very proud, in particular, that we can extend our support uh, to uh, the 
project for the employment of young people for, through culture and heritage in Yemen. The uh, budget has been extended by 90 million euros. It's a project that's implemented by UNESCO within the frame of the Cash for Work project. It has enabled uh, the creation of 4,000 jobs for young people for six months, but also to rehabilitate more than 160 historic buildings in Sana, Shibam, Zabid, and Aden. These buildings can now uh, be inhabited anew. For the new extension phase, which we will support, we are determined uh, to create jobs for an additional 8,700 young people. And we are particularly anxious to ensure that many of those young people are girls. We also have the intention to broaden the perimeter of the project to include four new towns and the island of Socotra, which is a unique site which is on UNESCO's World Heritage List. And then you know this project, which is to revive the spirit of Mosul that's been implemented by UNESCO in Iraq. The funding by Europe is 20 million euros. This project aims at restoring cultural heritage, but also renewing the uh, social ties that were destroyed during recent conflicts. I would also like to underscore that the, United, the European Union is determined uh, to combat uh, the illegal trading of cultural goods. And there will be a high-level conference on this subject tomorrow. We are going to work on two priorities specific to this subject. First of all, the adoption of the European regulation relating to uh, limiting, uh, to controlling uh, imports of cultural goods, which is a major step forward, and also the fact that the art market for the first time has been included in the scope of the European Directive on the fight against money laundering. These are key steps forward, but additional efforts are required to strengthen and enhance the capacities of authorities that need to implement the legislation. Ladies and gentlemen, on all of these subjects, you can count on uh, the unfailing support of the European Commission and on my personal commitment. I wish all of you very interesting and lively discussions during the conference, and I trust that it will be possible to raise funding in keeping with the ambition of the projects Alif wishes to help. Thank you very much. I now invite Her Excellency Nora al Kabi, Minister of Culture and Youth of the United Arab Emirates, to make her remarks. Good evening. Honorable President Emmanuel Macron, uh, Your Excellency Jean-Yves Dorian, Minister of Europe and Foreign Affairs, um, Your Excellency Margit Eskinaz, Vice President of Promoting uh, European Way of Life, European Commission, uh, of course, uh, President of the Institut du Monde Arabe, uh, Jack Long, uh, Dr. Tom Kaplan, uh, the Chair of Aleph Board, um, and uh, of course, the host of this beautiful hall, Laurence Descartes, President of the Louvre. Dear ambassadors, excellencies, and distinguished guests, I'm really, truly honored to be here today at the second donors conference at the International Alliance of the Protection of Heritage in Conflict Areas, ELIF. It's been a very fruitful five years for the Alliance for the first took place in Abu Dhabi, and in 2000, afterwards in 2017, and has taken the shape into robust fund of cultural heritage protection. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of our partners who, lived, who have joined us in this journey to revive and restore the glory of human heritage and regions under siege. It's heartening to see that our efforts are not limited to a region or a community, but reach far and wide across the global for the benefit of our shared humanity. ELIF has dedicated more than $80 million to revive projects in war zones all over the world, 
with a focus on the Middle East and Sahel countries, the fund has been instrumental in restoring more than 150 projects in nearly 30 countries, as the President alluded. To continue our work, ladies and gentlemen, the UAE has pledged another 20 million US dollars for the upcoming period from 2023 to 2027. I commend the collective efforts of all our partner countries, private entities, and experts who have worked tirelessly to revive and rebuild momentous and monuments and museums and restore collections, manuscripts, and archives from Iraq to Niger, Indonesia to Lebanon, and Peru to Cambodia. To name but a few of the countries where heritage has been given a new lease of life by Elif. Established as a public-private partnership, it has been working with two-pronged approach to preserve the cultural heritage while also creating job opportunities for the local people and on the job training for local conservation professionals. The Alliance has provided financial aid to restore some of humanity's greatest treasures, and I'm not going to mention them as the President also beautifully mentioned them. My dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to draw your attention to the UAE's efforts in the field of heritage preservation. Our visionary leaders have inspired us to take pride in our history and our roots, to have also instilled in us to the need to embrace all of other cultures of the world. We believe that staying connected to our roots is the first step towards building a strong future. We also believe in preserving the heritage of humanity for future generations and to build a better world. In a world with growing disparities, we need to build bridges to bring people closer and celebrate diversity and pluralism. The UAE has been leading for the front on Elif's flagship projects for the rehabilitation of the Mosul Museum and the Minham Monastery. We have also been leading the arrival of the Spirit of Mosul project in partnership with the UNESCO and the European Union. The UAE National Commission for the Education, Culture, and Science is in the charge of this project that includes three sites, which are the Nuri Mosque Complex, at Tahira Church, and Sa'a Church. At the heart of this ambitious project lies the vision to restore life and livelihood of the residents of Mosul. It is truly a cultural initiative that goes beyond brick and mortar to creating an ecosystem. Just days ago, due to work on the Nuri Mosque, a prayer room dating back to the 12th century was discovered. This discovery emphasizes the importance of the work being carried out as it brings to life historical and cultural treasures. With a budget of 50.4 million US dollars, UAE contributed for the five-year project, which will be concluded in 2023. Thus far, the project has hired roughly 1,300 locals and 70% of the companies partnered with the project from Iraq, ensuring that that meets the goal of impacting the local economy. With the restored historical sites and the creation of the museum site, as well as educational and community spaces, the project will comp contribute to tourism and help boost the economy of Mosul. It demonstrates how, cultural, how culture can impact the economy and the lives of millions of people. I would like also to thank the team in Elif, Jean-Luc Martinez, Chair of the Scientific Committee, and the Director, Valerie Ferland. Thank you so much for your work and the team's work as well. I would like to conclude by saying that Elif have lived up to the promises, and going forward, we are ready to walk the talk and Elif to, as the Elif way. We hope to see an even stronger alliance and greater global engagement in ELIF path-breaking initiatives in the coming year. Thank you very much. I would now like to invite His Highness Prince Badr bin Abdullah Al Saud, Minister of Culture of Saudi Arabia, to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, I would like to thank His Excellency, the President of the French Republic, Emmanuel Macron, 
for having organized this second Alif conference for protecting heritage in conflict zones. I'd also like to thank His Excellency Jean-Yves Le Drian and, his ex and Her Excellency Roselyne Bachelot uh, for extending this invitation to us. I would also like to express thanks to the Alif Committee presided by Mr. Cablon in their efforts to protect cultural heritage in conflict zones and for what they are doing uh, to recover the situation in these conflict areas. Working together is vital. And together, we have announced further financial commitments for the Alif Fund. And this comes as part of our support to Alif. In our vision for 2030, Saudi Arabia is taking extremely seriously the protection of cultural heritage against threats. It is part of this action that we have implemented a number of initiatives and we participate in a number of initiatives that strengthen the way we defend our cultural heritage in our own country and elsewhere. We are supporting specialists and professional networks in the heritage sectors as part of a number of partnerships. My country, my country has taken on a leadership role as part of its role in the G20 to underline the importance of protecting cultural heritage as part of a sustainable development process. And the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is committed to continue these efforts internationally, most notably as part of our role as Vice President of the World Heritage Committee at UNESCO. We also wish to strengthen the work of this foundation in the future. And we would like to commend initiatives undertaken as part of this foundation's work. Of course, our cooperation is vital. This cooperation contributes to social cohesion and to understanding each other as well as to cultural diversity. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I am pleased to invite the chair of the Aleph Foundation Board, Dr. Thomas S. Kaplan. Monsieur le Ministre, cher Jean-Yves, Madame le Ministre, Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Five years ago, Almost to the very day, a group of determined, visionary women and men gathered in this very courtyard and took a pledge. Together, they decided to stand up to a new form of terrorist aggression, to respond to the abject cultural cleansing then taking place in Palmyra, Timbuktu, and Raqqa. And at last to marshal a united front against the insidious erasure of mankind's shared heritage. That most noble and uplifting of reposts was given a name, Alif. Coming on the heels of the successful international conference on safeguarding cultural heritage in conflict areas held in December 2016 in Abu Dhabi, this newfound alliance of civilizations, the product of an ever closer Franco-Emirati relationship, was granted both the financial and political capital to go out and engage head-on in this complex field of operations. Joined with remarkable poise and resolution by other nation states, foundations, and private philanthropists, a novel kind of multilateral organization, a startup backed by the UN, was born. Five years on, it's my privilege on behalf of the Foundation's Board, a group of wonderful and inspired and dedicated people, to report that the results have been nothing short of astonishing. The startup is now a unicorn. With over 150 projects in 30 countries, as you've heard, Aleph has made more than just a name. It's made a difference. A difference in the lives of those who every day face the trauma of war, terrorism, 
and the injustice of sacrificed memories. A difference for individuals to whom cultural heritage represents not only an important source of meaning, but also a key component of their livelihoods. A difference in the hearts and minds of people everywhere who look to their past to better understand the present and to build an even brighter, more peaceful, more hopeful future. And a difference also in what the comity of nations can achieve tangibly, effectively, when mobilized towards a higher cause. Some of these projects were large and illustrious, as in Nineveh, Bandiagara, or the Arch of Tessaphon. Others were small and relatively lesser known, like Sondondo Valley in Peru, Gadanes in Libya, Adulis in Eritrea, Kokur in Cambodia, or just recently, Maluku in Indonesia. Some constituted long-term commitments, such as the museum in Mosul or the Minaret of Jam. Others were financed in a matter of days and even hours as emergency measures, an institution-defining procedure that was famously invoked to a rapidly response team of COVID-19 and in the aftermath of the August 2020 explosion in the port of Beirut. Throughout this journey, a rallying cry came quickly to characterize the ethos of our organization. Action, action, action. An echo of sorts, although in a less bloody fashion, to Danton's revolutionary exhortation of l'audace, encore de l'audace, toujours de l'audace. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact of the matter is with all of that audacity, none of this would have been possible without the steadfast support and inspiring leadership of President Macron, a man of great vision and a truly magnificent custodian of France's birthright as the eternal home of universalism. It would not have happened either without the personal engagement and unwavering trust of one of my closest friends, my prince, His Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, and that most passionate and consequential of global change agents, His Royal Highness Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. I wish to pause a moment here to acknowledge what just happened a few months ago, because I think that Prince Badr was being a bit too modest. As the representative of the kingdom, Prince Badr, my brother, my dear friend, addressed the conference. For Saudi Arabia actually didn't just commit to Alif, it committed to match dollar for dollar the French Republic's financial contribution. That they did so in such a vigorous manner and on this particular issue of preserving humanity's common heritage should not just be appreciated, it should be applauded. Yet another of so many watershed moments in what I've come to call the Saudi reawakening. This announcement is not simply an endorsement of Aleph as having been a fine investment in measurable outcomes. It's much, much more, my friends. So before I go on and on a personal note, as one whose relative advantage in life has been as a historian, I wish Prince Badr's pledge to be understood in the broader context of the incredible transformation currently taking place in plain sight in the kingdom one that carries with it the possibility of changing the entire Middle East and hence the entire world for the better. Prince Badr, in his capacity as both Minister of Culture and Governor of Alula, itself the home of a spectacular pre-Islamic site that constitutes the most exciting cultural restoration project globally, is both a symbol and a powerful catalyst of this historic revolution. Obviously, no one knows this better than the truly fabulous and wonderful Nora Al-Kabi. Her Excellency is a champion of Aleph herself and the official representative of my brothers and sisters in the United Arab Emirates. The UAE being the tip of the region's spear as the most palpable source of hope and of reforms to emulate. As some of you may be aware, I've been known to collect a painting or two, all from the Dutch Golden Age, with a remarkable fondness for that most favorite son of the Netherlands, Rembrandt. Rembrandt was a brilliant teacher as well as a master of his craft. 
Taking his cue from the Italians, he practiced the art of emulatio, whereby the student would learn from the master with the ambition one day to surpass him. All in the name of peace, tolerance, and mutual respect, let us all be more like Rembrandt, and let us take our cue from today's aspirational vanguard of France, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia. Dear Noura, you are deeply, deeply appreciated, and we are so honored to have you with us today. Your Highness, Prince Bader, thank you once again for leading our assembled guests by your generous and elevating example. To this noble list of enlightened servants to mankind's shared inheritance, I wish to add the names of Jean-Luc Martinez, who was the first to conceive of the idea for a global fund to protect cultural heritage in conflict zones. Jack Lang, my wonderful predecessor, whose trademark energy and foresight got the organization off the ground. I'm so grateful. And my closest colleagues, Aleph's inestimable vice chairs, my beloved sister, Barisa Chiari, and mon frère Daum, His Excellency Mohammed Al Mubarak, who coined the expression, the Aleph way, for the way that we take on challenges and execute. With tears of gratitude, I thank them both for their wisdom and exceptional guardianship of Aleph's spirit. I extend my own heartfelt thanks to my dear friend and comrade, Jean-Yves Le Drian, as well as Minister Bachelot and their respective teams, in particular Augustin Favero and Severine Fautrel for their constant backing and immutable confidence in our work. And last, but certainly not least, a hero. The hero being the entire Aleph Secretariat, led by the superb Valérie Frelon, the captain of our ship. Actually, as I now say, he's more than the captain of the ship, with 150 projects, He's now l'amiral de la flotte, the architect of our gathering today, which is a monumental achievement on par with these beautiful, beautiful stones. And so with Aleph how, having now achieved escape velocity, I stand before you today confident in the Foundation's future and in our ability to achieve, perhaps even exceed, our objectives for this conference. In addition to increasing awareness within the international community about the central role that heritage pr protection plays in conflict areas, we aim to raise at least a similar amount to our first donors conference of 2017, which was $80 million, in support of the organization's strategy for 2023 to 2027. This document, which our board unanimously approved, and which shall govern a period not just of consolidation, but further development for the Foundation's activities, enshrines Aleph's continued commitment to supporting concrete and integrated projects that have a local impact. It also emphasizes our focus on strengthening partnerships with like-minded institutions, chief among them, UNESCO as well as the pivotal relationship that exists between heritage conservation and humanitarian and environmental action. A third and equally crucial objective is the expansion of Aleph's membership to new geographies and actors. Looking at the room, and indeed the level of representation, gives me considerable hope that in that endeavor too, we shall succeed mightily I am encouraging an arms race of generosity. This is especially true of the European Union with 12 member states in attendance. Allow me therefore to acknowledge, among many other eminent representatives from around the world, the presence of His Excellency Margarita Skinas, Vice President of the European Commission. Kalos irtate. Welcome also to every nation state and non-governmental organization that has expressed an interest in Aleph. Your participation in this conference is immensely appreciated. We promise a great return 
on investment. We look forward to engaging closely with every one of you in the International Alliance for the Protection of Heritage in Conflict Areas as we go, grow bigger, stronger, and more impactful. The great German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck once observed that a statesman, a statesman is a politician who is thinking of his grandchildren. As a father of three and a grandfather, hopefully, inshallah, to many more, I wish to express my most sincere gratitude for your generosity of both spirit and resources, not just in making Aleph a reality, but in fact, five years onwards, a decisive force for good and an engine of tangible results. In that, I am pleased to announce that my own family will renew our financial contribution to this wonderful needle-moving organization. And as a fully paid up member of the human race, I also wish at last to salute the future aspirations of our collective enterprise and the singular promise that it holds for our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of the world, to whom so much is owed, starting with the preservation, sharing, and transmission of the epic phenomenon that is human civilization. Merci beaucoup. Shukran Jazilan. Thank you very much. I'd, I'd like to call upon the Assistant Director General for Culture of UNESCO, Ernesto Otana. Oops. Mm. Monsieur le Vice President. De la Commission européenne. Vice President of the European Commission, Ministers. Monsieur le Président de l'Alif, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs. President of Alif, Excellences, Ladies and Gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here today in the Louvre to celebrate the work that we are all doing together to protect cultural heritage. This is the last day of the month of January. And I can take advantage of this opportunity to wish you my very best miss wishes for 2022. Let us hope that this coming year will help us to reinforce our action in order to protect cultural heritage all over the world. Since Alif was set up in 2017, it has shown its ability to intervene closer to areas of armed conflict in order to protect uh, heritage uh, that is affected by these, uh, the fighting and also to support local communities. It contributes to a fundamental mission of uh, an organization like UNESCO, which is uh, to safeguard and protect uh, our heritage. 2022 is the uh, 50th anniversary of uh, the Convention of UNESCO on World Heritage, five decades of action of the international community to protect uh, these uh, symbolic uh, signs of our shared humanity where our identity can resonate and which echoes our universal values. This heritage is often threatened by armed conflict. Sometimes it's deliberately targeted by warring parties. Through international conventions and its work on the ground, UNESCO tries to protect the idea of universality as we did in Afghanistan where we rebuilt or when we rebuilt uh, the iconic bridge of Mostar in uh, Serbia Herzegovina Alif since 2017 has been a new and considerable support in our work uh, to help communities affected by conflicts in Afghanistan in Mali in Iraq or in Lebanon recently and to support what we do to protect uh, our heritage it may be the uh, preservation of uh, uh, archaeological uh, heritage in Afghanistan or a protection of sites in Mali or the work that Alif has done to restore uh, many historic uh, buildings in Mosul in Iraq. Uh, UNESCO and the United Arab Emirates uh, launched a major project in February 2018 to revive Mosul. 
we are mobilized and we're determined uh, with the support of the United Arab Emirates, the European Union and Canada uh, to revive the monuments uh, which, uh, of this town, which is a symbol of cultural diversity. Oh, Alif has also helped in Beirut uh, and helped uh, to restore the cultural and educational fabric of Beirut. The work of Alif is very valuable, and we are delighted with what has been achieved. And we would like to thank you, the donors, because in supporting this work, our work, Alif gives UNESCO and its 193 member countries additional resources so that it can intervene in conflict areas. As you know, this is one of the priorities of our organization with the twin objective of prevention and protection of heritage and cultural diversity, which also often is imperiled. Alif has made a promise of additional resources and capacities of intervention, and this is why, since it was set up, UNESCO has supported it in the inaugural conference uh, in 2016 and also sitting on the board of the foundation since then. There's a close working relationship between UNESCO and Alif, and this is what we are commemorating or celebrating today. And this conference is an opportunity for UNESCO to underscore its support to Alif and appeal alongside France to the international community so that it continues to support its endeavors to protect our cultural heritage. It's a matter of concern for all of us. And it relates uh, to what unites all of us as uh, humankind. Thank you very much indeed. I would now like to call upon Jean-Luc Martinez, His Excellency Jean-Luc Martinez, to the stage, Chair of Aleph's Scientific Committee. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, me... Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, this uh, coming part which is devoted to testimonials so that we can uh, look more closely at what has been achieved by Alif over the last few years. I chair the scientific committee and have done for the last three years to with my colleagues, the international experts on heritage who make up this committee, there are ten of them. We wanted to present uh, some concrete projects to the board. These are projects uh, which involve the local communities, the local populations, and uh, uh, which are uh, stepping stones, milestones in rebuilding peace in these countries. We need to listen closely to the needs of the local communities. The principles underpin Alif's work over the last five years, and I'd like to begin uh, by showing you a short film which will remind you of those principles in our work. قبل از این دیگه دیگه من کاری دخون کاری و دخونی و مسیر کاری مزیر کاری نمیکاره ای سالی نمیکاره دا مارکاب باگرام ما دا فامیل دانا فراستم که تن و کارگر ما خودم استم دیگه اشکالش با چهای ما در سال پایان است دیگه چند تا سیاسر است که دختر است واقع کلان استن کار سایه بکار نیستن مکتب میخونم من نمیکنم دیگه کارگر خودم استم در سال اول استم این نمیکاره که میکنم فاضل خود با خود واجه پر روزگار میشه تنوع سكاني عندنا احنا القرية يعيشون بها التركمان العرب الشبك المسيحيين تعايش سلمي بيناتنا الدير له وقع في نفسي ونفوس الآخرين والدير هو شيء جزء من المنطقة وله تاريخ يعني مع المنطقة لا يمكن أن ننساه ولا يمكن أن نتجاهله
Les changements climatiques, c'est une grande menace à Gades. Aujourd'hui, il pleut beaucoup plus fort. Donc tout de suite, on a des torrents qui viennent et euh, on a eu des maisons qui ont tombé. Et tout de suite, on a eu surtout des maisons où les fondations ont commencé à partir parce qu'il pleut beaucoup. L'ancienne méthode, les techniques traditionnelles, ça a montré que ça peut résister beaucoup plus à cette intempérie. Donc on a proposé des formations des jeunes maçons aux techniques traditionnelles de crépissage. Et ils peuvent continuer durablement à entretenir la maison. C'est une organisation dont l'Afrique a besoin, dont les musées africains ont besoin. Si demain nos enfants et les enfants de nos enfants arrivent à voir les objets, ce sera en partie grâce à Alif. Alif nous a aidés de façon cruciale, non seulement pour le soutien financier qu'on a reçu pour le, pour le projet, mais aussi un support humain, d'autant plus dans une période si difficile comme en 2020. Cette conférence est également l'occasion de rendre un This conference is an opportunity to pay a special tribute to a man who was uh, the forerunner and the first president of Alif and who is paying us the honor of being here today. I'm talking about Mr. Jacques Long, president de l'Institut du Monde Arabe, who uh, was the special representative of the uh, French presidency for Alif. Mr. Jacques Long, please come up to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, excellences, just a few words, if I may, I would like to talk briefly about the President François Mitterrand. It was here in the Louvre that he helped to transform that we're now having this conference. This used to be the Ministry of Finance in this particular place. It was the French Ministry of Finance. And there was a strong political will not to destroy the Ministry of Finance. It's been transferred elsewhere to a fine building. But I think it's a strong measure symbolically to give culture and art and history and heritage preeminence over administration of public finances. This is a symbolic decision. It required a great deal of ambition, determination, and a vision, and an ideal, the ideal that inspires all of those who work with Alif. Mr. Martinez, who announced the idea in his report to the then President François Hollande, and very quickly the project was up and running, because when there's a will, there's a way. Two special ambassadors were appointed, Mohamed al Boubarak for the United Arab Emirates and for France myself. And very quickly, we laid the foundations of an alliance of friendship, as Tom Kaplan called it. The conference in Abu Dhabi really gave this project a, a soul and a spirit. I would like to thank all of those who participated in this venture. It's a team based on action, action for culture, action for transformation, action at the service of other countries. Tom Kaplan is accompanied, supported, enlightened by two vice presidents, Marie Akari, who provides energy, vibrancy, culture, 
and Mohammed Al Barak, who has many responsibilities in the United Arab Emirates, so together with a board made up of eminent uh, experts. Uh, who are here today together with uh, some high-ranking people such as Prince Bader. And Tom Kaplan has mentioned this. There's a revolution underway uh, in the region. And then the director. Is he now an admiral? Well, if so, vive l'amiral Frelon not just the captain, but now an admirable, admiral. He works hard, unstinting in his efforts. Uh, he deserves congratulations and thanks. And I'd also like to thank the president of the French Republic, Emmanuel Macron. As soon as he came to power, he decided that he would give his wholehearted support, his unstinting efforts to support and encourage Alif. A big thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you, Minister. I think that it's clear to all. Some projects have been listed. Alif is to be found in some 30 countries at the moment, and particularly in Iraq, where the Foundation is supporting 35 projects to protect, stabilize, or to restore the outstanding heritage of that country. I'd like to say a special word of thanks to Dr. Hassan Nadem, who's the Minister of Culture, Tourism, and Antiquities in Iraq. Alif works very closely with him, and I'm delighted that he's been able to attend today together with his team. Minister, sir, I give you the floor. Ashab al-Ma'ali wa-Sa'ada, assalamu alaykum. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. May peace be with you. The cultural heritage of Iraq has been hard hit, and we'd like to thank the organizations and foundations that have helped to create Alif and that have supported it. France, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, China, Morocco, Kuwait, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Monaco, and other institutions and foundations, uh, such as the Andrew Mellon Foundation, Gandur for Arts Foundation. And of course, I welcome the leadership of Mr. Kaplan, uh, Jean-Luc Martinez, and their teams. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, when talking about uh, any strong, robust foundation with principles and uh, makes its mark at international level, and that tries to protect a cultural heritage, then immediately we think of the International uh, Alliance for the Protection of Cultural Heritage in Conflict Areas. Its objective clearly is to protect and restore cultural heritage to build peace. Iraq has been working hard in times of peace and in times of conflict to protect its rich cultural heritage from the, it has been severely damaged in many towns, many sites have suffered a lot of damage and deterioration. I'm thinking of bombings, but also looting. But the example of Iraq, goes to show that institutions can provide support to countries that are suffering from conflict. Alif is one of the major institutions that helps to protect uh, 
uh, our uh, heritage. For instance, in Mosul, a town that uh, was devastated uh, by the attacks uh, by Daesh. Alif, together with UNESCO, has worked hard in Mosul and has helped uh, to restore also historic buildings, uh, the uh, church at Taira, uh, Mosul's museum and its collections. These sites have been deliberately targeted by Daesh. Alif also supports uh, the restoration of other sites in the region. These sites, too, have been attacked directly by uh, Daesh. Omar Benham, for instance, but other sites in Iraqi Kurdistan. And sites uh, that uh, belong to the Yazidi community. The partnership between the uh, Ministry for Culture and Tourism and antiquities with Alif has helped to protect this heritage. We've worked with many international organizations and, as I said, we have 35 projects which have benefited from $90 million of aid. Alif intervened quickly, trained craftsmen. This foundation responded with great agility to our needs for support. I'm thinking in particular of the Kasra project where Alif's support was vital and a situation of uh, urgency. There's a pandemic at the moment, and Alif has continued to support us in helping to protect our heritage. We had close cooperation with Alif, which provided, as I said, support for our projects, which have really borne fruit and had a direct impact on the ground not just in protecting and restoring the heritage, but also bringing civilizations close together and improving the day-to-day -day lives of populations and rebuilding peace. We must continue to work together to protect cultural heritage in Iraq. Our strategy consists in strengthening further our cooperation, and I trust that this cooperation will have an ever greater impact in a beneficial way in the future. Thank you, Minister. As we've heard many times, one of the great strengths of Alif is that it is agile. It can respond quickly to situations, as we saw in 2020, following the explosions in the old town of Beirut. In response, Alif, in just a few days, uh, was ready to help. Alif is made up of men and women who know each other well and who can work quickly together. I would now like to call up, well, to the screen, unfortunately I'm not able to be here today, a testimonial of my friend, Dr. Sarkis El Khoury, who's the Director General of Antiquities in Lebanon. It's an honor for me to be able to do two things um, in showing you the consequences of the Beirut explosion for Beirut and also to commend all of the international organizations that leveraged their resources to support the Ministry for Culture in Lebanon, including the Alif Foundation for the emergency support that Alif was able to provide. In the hours after the tragic explosion, the Director General for Antiquities was a key player in the operations that aimed to save the identity of our capital. And we immediately created a crisis cell, bringing together teams of professionals in art, conservation, and restoration. This crisis cell worked in the field to respond to the immediate crisis 
and also to look at the overall damage to material and immaterial heritage. A preliminary plan was drawn up aiming to identify the danger zones and identifying the costs, the action plans, and what could be done faced with this situation. More than 100 historical buildings were damaged with early estimates beyond $300 million of damage and $1.5 billion in the cultural sector as a whole. In just four days, the Beirut Assist Cultural Heritage Project was born. Alif was the first to answer the call. Our restoration project started with the rehabilitation of the beautiful Beirut Museum, which is a symbol of our national unity, our shared history, and our shared memory. The museum, indeed, was struck by the explosion. This project was undertaken thanks to Alif's financial support and also the technical expertise from the Louvre Museum. And I would like to thank the Alif Foundation for the emergency support that they immediately provided us with, more than $200,000. And that was the first phase. On a more personal note, I would also like to thank Valérie Frolland, the executive director of Alif, and Jean-Luc Martinez, former president and director of the Louvre Museum. They both provided me with their support in the day after the explosion. This support not only helps us secure the museum, but also repair the damage that affected the Directorate General of Antiquities in the building where we work. And I would like to thank Mrs. Laurence Decart and congratulate her on her well-deserved posting. The second part of the project, Action Plan for the Recovery of uh, Beirut Heritage, is a project related to the destruction that was wreaked on the historical districts of Beirut. Tremendous damage that requires the input of a number of partners to repair, including once again Alif that helped us with an envelope of $2.3 million for the safeguarding of heritage and the Beirut Museum. 17 projects were carried out. The emergency repairs of 20 or so buildings that had lost their roofs was necessary before the rainy season and this will be handled by the French Institute for the Near East. Alif also supported the St. George, the Greek Orthodox Cathedral renovation, and this will be piloted by the Superior Business School with the support of the French Institute for the Near East. Furthermore, the restoration of the Sosso Institute, the National Library, and many others and the BIPOS site as well. This is a significant challenge that we are faced with to protect and safeguard our shared heritage. And this is necessary to build the future for Lebanon. However, the Director General for Antiquities and the Ministry for Culture has never shirked its responsibilities in fighting for the safeguarding of material and immaterial heritage. The Director General for Antiquities will always fight alongside those who wish to work to safeguard and protect heritage and museums in Lebanon. I would like to sincerely thank all of the organizations, international organizations, who supported us in protecting heritage and the museums in Lebanon the volunteer organizations who contributed to reconstruction, the inhabitants and the business owners who are working to bring Beirut back to life out of its ashes. And I would like to thank the organizers of this conference and all of the participants and people who donated to Elif. Thank you. Vous l'avez compris,
So as I'm sure you gathered, Alif has this ability to act through a very particular network. And Alif is also an action that relies on partnerships of a dozen partners around the world, people who are working to be as effective as possible, including the regional center for the Arabic heritage in Bahrain, the president of which is with us right here, Sheikh Ami bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, thank you. We wished to underline the importance of the renovation of the beautiful mud buildings in Shiban in Yemen. And I would like to thank the people who are working on this project in the field, Mrs. Selma Kassem, first of all, to speak. Dear Excellencies and esteemed guests, on behalf of the Arab Regional Center, I have the honor today to take the floor in order to draw your kind attention to a fruitful project partnership that has been generously funded by the Ale Foundation. On behalf of Her Excellency Sheikh Hamey bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, who honored us today with her presence, being the chairperson of the Arab Regional Center for World Heritage, a UNESCO Category 2 center established in the Kingdom of Bahrain, and the local partners in the Republic of Yemen, specifically the General Organization for the Preservation of Historic Cities in Yemen, Gofsi Shibam Branch, as well as the local community, we would all like to express our deepest appreciation to the Ale Foundation and its scientific board for the relentless support in contributing to the safeguarding of the outstanding universal value of the World Heritage Site, Old Walled City of Shibam, which has been on the World Heritage List in danger since 2015. Within the past years, the World Heritage Site has not only suffered from effects of the armed conflict, but also of severe torrential rains which have led to the drastic increase in structural decay, poverty, and migration outside the city. The project partnership directly focuses on contributing to the safeguarding of the OUV by restoring 15 historic buildings through the job creation of local craftsmen who only apply their traditional restoration techniques, as you can see on the pictures, um, in order to allow for the local families to return to their homes. Being Yemeni and German, I have the privilege to visit the site myself in order to maintain the strong partnership with the locals, but also to ensure that the project is successfully um, progressing. I have the pleasure to inform you today that the restoration, well, um, out of 15 historic buildings, the restoration works of five have already completed and the works on the following four have started. Once again, on behalf of all project partners and especially the local community, we would like to express our deepest appreciation to the Ale Foundation and look forward to our continued collaboration. Thank you very much. Merci pour ce témoignage. Alors un dernier. Thank you for your witness account. We have a final one in the form of a video. We're going to be hearing from the Chief Executive Officer of the National Geographic Society that we work with. I'm sure you recognize the name. For 100 years, they've been working to promote and protect heritage around the world. So on screen, Dr. Jill Tiefenthaler. Good evening. I'm Jill Tiefenthaler, CEO of the National Geographic Society. Your excellencies and distinguished guests, it's truly an honor to join you from our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. And on behalf of the entire organization, thank you for hosting this critical conversation. At National Geographic, we share your passion for preserving cultural heritage sites, 
as well as supporting the communities who call them home. And we share your spirit of collaboration. Protecting treasured sites does not happen with a stroke of a pen. It takes the tireless dedication of committed leaders like those here today, working together with governments, organizations, and countless others to research, preserve, and restore them. We are humbled and proud to join you on this journey as an official partner with the Alif Foundation to accelerate the global protection of cultural heritage sites. Our Explore-led cultural heritage programs and our work to save hidden treasures in Afghanistan, looted artifacts in Iraq, and other threatened sites around the globe complement and enhance the work that Alif has supported since its founding five years ago. Both our organizations focus on delivering concrete results and working with local communities to save and protect the cultural heritage that is most significant to them. National Geographic has undertaken this work for more than a century, and Alif is only five years old, but we are both committed to the same mission, and we look forward to a productive relationship. Thank you. Donc pour poursuivre notre conférence, j'invite To continue with our conference, we have Valérie Froland, executive director of Alif, who's going to join us. Merci Jean-Luc, ce n'est pas encore l'amiral, c'est simplement Thank you uh, Jean-Luc. I haven't yet changed my official title to admiral. I guess it's a little bit earlier. Uh, thank you very much. The president dear guests. Alif would be nothing without its guests. As you know, Alif is a fund which funds projects and quite naturally we select the projects we want to support and we support them in the most human way we can. We work with dozens of partners internationally and locally, and our aim for the coming years is to help develop these partnerships because we believe that together with everyone's willpower, we will be the most useful and productive. A few months ago, we signed a number of agreements, MOUs with a range of organizations. We have a tight partnership with UNESCO that we work with very regularly. We also have a partnership with the Alliance of Civilizations and the World Wellness Fund. Today, this meeting is an opportunity for us to show that we are at the heart of the ecosystem of world heritage and to show how we wish to work with new partners with which we now have memorandums of understanding. We have the government of the Greek Republic. After this sequence, we'll be meeting with them. The International Center for the Study and Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Assets, ICROM, the International Council for Monuments and Sites, ICMOS, the International Council for Museums, ICOM, Europa Nostra, playing a key role in protecting heritage, the Institut National du Patrimoine Francais, Cyprus Institute, Hungary helps, the University Politecnico de Milano, La Fondazione Sangantana de Turin, the Heritage Management Organization, and the National Geographic Society. We've been able to sign MOUs with all of these partners today to be better prepared than ever and to be a bigger part of the ecosystem. These partnerships and many others to come will enable us for the coming five years to, first of all, strengthen our agility. We can strengthen our prevention measures and emergency reactions to help the professionals in the countries in crisis, as we saw recently with Afghanistan. The second goal is to be able to always meet the needs in the field, including training especially in priority countries for us, such as Iraq. Iraq is a country with which we have more than a working relationship. We share passion for heritage. We have friendship, Mr. Minister, and thank you for delighting us with your presence today. And we're going to continue our tireless work in Atra, Stesiphon, and the museums in Mosul and Baghdad. We also want to have a more active role in Yemen, where we are suggesting that we contribute to the cooperation between local and international partners for the rehabilitation of Shibam, Zabid, and Ziun with our partners, and also in Mali. 
where alongside UNESCO and others, we have some beautiful projects that are under, underway, and we want to continue to preserve the beautiful sites and manuscripts from that country. And finally, in Afghanistan, where the needs for humanitarian aid are extremely acute, and we wish to continue to take a case-by-case -case approach with, with our trusted partners, some of them are here with us today, in full respect of universal values, including the equality between men and women. Modestly, on behalf of the Secretariat of Relief, a team that has been fully mobilized to prepare this day and that I would like to thank, I'm very proud of them today, I have to tell you. I wish to tell you that we are fully committed alongside everyone for the heritage in the crisis-stricken countries, and I'd like to thank you all for your trust. Thank you. Many thanks, Valérie. And now we come to the pledging and political support part of the program. So the order of the interventions will be the following. First, the ministerial level, and then the other delegations. And I will be calling P um, delegates in alphabetical order from the French. So to begin from Germany, I call upon Her Excellency Katja Keid, Minister of State, Federal Foreign Office. Monsieur le Ministre, Madame la Ministre, Monsieur le Directeur Exécutif, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs. Executive Director, Excellences, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's often said that it was Bernard de Chartres, uh, who was a medieval philosopher, who said first, we are like dwarves standing on the shoulders of giants. Here in the Louvre, we are literally standing on the shoulders of history. Originally, the Louvre was part of the walls around the city to protect the city. Subsequently, it was used as the foundation for the residency of the kings of France. It has now been transformed into one of the most famous and beautiful museums in the world. Along the banks of the Seine, and indeed, this site as a whole is part of the UNESCO's World Heritage List. The Louvre Museum contains some of the most remarkable examples of the world cultural heritage. Each generation leaves a, a new layer of history at the Louvre. Often, it takes several centuries for a World Heritage Site to really take form, but it only takes a few minutes, a few hours to destroy it. We all still remember those terrible images of the demolition of the Bell Temple in Palmyra or the smoking ruins of the National Museum in Rio de Janeiro. Cultural heritage is threatened by conflicts, by human-made disasters, but also natural disasters, and by the consequences of the climate crisis. Last summer, devastating floods destroyed a number of historic monuments in Germany. We need to step up our efforts to protect the cultural heritage, particularly at European level and multilateral ways within the frame of UNESCO. And this is why we unreservedly support the multilateral approach of ALIF, which makes a significant contribution to the protection and the restoration of cultural heritage in conflict and post-conflict areas. We are currently studying the possibility of a formal uh, membership of Germany to ALIF with the corresponding financial contribution. But I can assure you, as of now, that we are fully committed to sharing our expertise and to cooperating as closely as possible. Uh, we have a bilateral program for the safeguard of cultural heritage. It was set up 40 years ago. It has subsidized already some 3,000 projects in 145 countries worldwide. Currently, we're working with the German Archaeology Institute and other partnerships uh, to elaborate a rapid response mechanism called Kulturgutretter. This would enable us to intervene immediately to save buildings and objects. We would be able to mobilize experts and technical resources at the request of the countries concerned. It would be part and parcel of the German civilian protection mission and uh, could be 
part of the uh, EU civilian pr protection mechanism. I think there is ample opportunity for cooperation with, between this mechanism and ALIF. This Kultur Gutretter mechanism is a um, way of intervening immediately in the case of uh, an urgent crisis. ALIF also is very responsive and mobilizes resources quickly. Both would be very useful for the restoration of cultural heritage in the medium and long term. Ladies and gentlemen, the Louvre has changed. It was a citadel, and now it's become the open, welcoming cradle for art, culture, and individual exchange. Thus, it is iconic that uh, as a place of a meeting of this conference today. The best way of protecting a world that is threatened by conflict and man-made or natural disaster is not to build ever higher walls, but to build more bridges. This is the route that Alif has chosen with its multilateral approach based on action. We fully support this approach and we are eager to work together with you to conserve our shared common cultural heritage. Thank you very much. Merci, Madame la Ministre. I would now like to call upon from Bahrain Her Excellency Sheikha May bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, President of the Authority for Culture and Antiquities. Ashab al Sumo wal Maali wal Saada, al Astika al Azza, fi hadi al Mubadar al Raia, Elif, alati tasha. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Ali Foundation works tirelessly to protect cultural heritage. It was an initiative that was launched in the city of Light, Paris, with the support of the United Arab Emirates. This universal international meeting is aimed to showcase Alif and to protect our cultural heritage. We are proud of this heritage in our countries and elsewhere. Uh, this heritage is the building block of our future. I'm proud to represent the Kingdom of Bahrain today. Uh, we work also tirelessly through uh, the regional uh, center uh, for uh, cultural heritage, a category two institute under UNESCO's typology uh, to protect uh, cultural heritage. Our colleague from Yemen already gave some examples of sites that uh, have to be included in World Heritage so they can be better protected. I would like once again to thank all of those who have supported countries that have suffered from violence and destruction. We will continue to work uh, uh, fully with all those who want to protect our heritage. Today, it is vital that uh, we conserve this cultural heritage. There are many challenges, many difficulties, and we need uh, to make sure that we have the necessary means and resources to achieve our shared objective. Thank you for your attention. I'm so delighted to be here and take part in this high-level conference. And I do, particularly, actually, because we are meeting in the Louvre, which is such a magnificent museum. We have signed an agreement, actually, with the Louvre So for me, it's particularly important to be here in this museum, which presents so much of our universal heritage and testifies uh, to so many different historic periods, particularly in the Arab-speaking world. 
I would like to greet all of the participants, and I hope to see you very soon in the Kingdom of Bahrain for another conference. Thank you. Thank you. From China, over a recorded video, I'd like to call upon Mr. Li Kun, the administrator, the administrator of the National Administration of Cultural Heritage, representative of the Chinese government. Welcome. 女士们、先生们、朋友们 还有很多国际文化遗产界的老朋友一起应邀参加这次会议。我在北京向你们致以热情的问候。中国国家主席习近平阁下对文化遗产的保护、利用和传承，有许多精辟的见解。他强调，文物承载灿烂文明，传承历
，而是生存处境受到极大威胁的地区，特别是那里的人民，带去了人道关怀，注入了文化力量，努力保护和延续人类的共同记忆。作为文化大国和文明古国，中国始终相信，国际多边合作有利于更好守护人类文明成果，始终坚持维护和发展文化多样性。我们与希腊等国发起文明古国部长级论坛，在二十国集团框架下，探讨建立和完善文化遗产保护国际机制，参与应对气候变化对文化遗产影响的。国际行动等等，我们已经与世界上近四十个国家合作开展历史古迹保护修复与联合考古。我们联合亚洲二十七个国家开展亚洲文化遗产保护行动，发起成立亚洲文化遗产保护联盟。我们协调故宫博物院、敦煌研究院、香港历史博物馆等中国八地。九家文博机构为阿富汗国家博物馆的珍贵文物组织竭力巡展，用文明的力量守护文明，切实履行大国的责任和邻国义务。事实证明，文化遗产在应对全球挑战中应有一席之地，也确有一席之地。保护遇险的文化遗产。为困难中的人民提供力所能及的支持，这是一份崇高的事业。中国身在其中，积极践行人类命运共同体的理念，做出了应有的贡献。我和我的同事们感到十分自豪。女士们、先生们、朋友们，人心所归，唯道与义。保护冲突地区文化遗产，关乎人类福祉和命运。是全球经济社会可持续发展的其中应有之意。当今世界，地区性武装冲突时有发生，文化遗产由于其象征意义和文化含义，不时成为武装冲突的攻击目标。加之气候变化、自然灾害、非法贩运、新冠肺炎疫情等因素的叠加影响，文化遗产及从业人员。面临着巨大挑战，在此，我仅代表中国政府和中国文化遗产界的同仁，对联盟下一步发展提出如下思考和建议：首先是要勇担共同的责任。中方认为，因冲突地区文化遗产保护而建立的国际联盟，其首要含义是保护人类文化遗产的责任共同体。我们应利用已开展和正在开展的行动，进行冲突地区文化遗产相关数据收集和研究，分析地区文化遗产保护的长期性和深层次需要，向国际社会传播共享文化遗产风险和地区发展评估报告，通过具体而实际的任务展现，共担责任的决心，增强国际行动的前瞻性、针对性。和综合性。作为联盟发起国之一，中国愿继续支持联盟发展，积极研究、提供捐款，深度参与联盟治理，贡献中国经验、中国方案、中国智慧。二是要汇聚共同的力量。我们看到，已经开展的一百五十个项目中，各国都有各自的文化遗产保护实践。呃，中方认为，进一步提升联盟的行动力和影响力，关键在于汇聚力量。要建立交流共享机制，评选推荐文化遗产保护的优秀范例，宣传推广新科技手段，鼓励跨国主体实施，推动不同国家、地区和机构之间保护理念方法的互学互鉴。促进跨学科研究和跨文化交流，中方愿与联盟探索更多元、更深入的合作方式，鼓励中国优秀文博专业机构以多种途径与联盟开展合作，承担项目，促进
，理念交融，资源共享，行动同频，努力成为联盟国际合作立体网络的中坚力量。三是要重塑未来的希望。我们看到，联盟开展的很多合作项目，都为了最大限度的留存本地区、本民族独特的文化基因。借此，我们也能够深切感受到一个国家、一个民族、一个地区的文化遗产乃至文化传统，要得到长久的保护，归根结底要依靠自身力量。中国古语有云：“授人以鱼，不如授人以渔。”今后，我们要更加注重当地社区和民众的全程参与。更加注重当地文博机构一线人员，特别是年轻人才的能力建设，促进国际理念的本土化吸收和长久化应用。中国愿进一步拓展文化遗产多边合作的广度和深度，呼吁联盟在会议机制等之外，将更多的资金、资源、技术和机遇倾斜给。一个个平凡的人物和他们生动的事例，通过文化遗产的力量，帮助他们改变因地区冲突而受损的家园面貌，改写因战乱而中断的人生轨迹，汇聚成人类命运共同体的新篇章。It's already early in the morning in Beijing on the first day. In the Chinese lunar year of Tiger, I would like to take this opportunity to wish Oliver as breaks as a tiger with wings in the coming year, and everyone presents here today, good health, and as lovely as a tiger. Thank you. Next on video conference from Cyprus, we have His Excellency Podromos Prodomu, Minister of Culture, Youth and Sports. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a particular pleasure for me to be with you here today in the Louvre, although remotely. I would first of all like to congratulate all of the states for the initiatives that have led us here today. This is an important and significant project, and I would also like to thank all of the states and other participating organizations for their contributions to Alif. It is our moral duty, a vital duty, to safeguard our cultural heritage. These are integral parts of our history, as they are parts of our identity, and also a compass needle for the future. Damaging or destroying cultural heritage is something that goes back to the dawn of time, and the need to fight this is particularly relevant given the tenuous balance that we see in the international spheres. This was handled by during the latest meeting of the Ministers for Culture in Europe at the European Union. This is an issue that should not be handled individually at only national level. It requires close cooperation between states who can come together to promote the protection of monuments and the rights of states, be they large or small. Cyprus is also an example of how urgent it can be to protect cultural heritage, especially in the area of our country that's occupied by a foreign power. When the ambassador Jean-Luc Martinez and the executive director of Alif, Mr. Valéry Frelon, visited us, I immediately understood that Cyprus needed to support this initiative and this foundation. We are currently reforming our cultural policy. 
establishing in Cyprus a Secretary of State position for culture. This will enable us to look closer at the issues and to have a more effective management of cultural heritage. As Minister for Culture, with you here this evening, I wish to reassure you that the Republic of Cyprus supports the initiative and the foundation, ALIF, and we are looking at active participation. For the time being, I wish you great success in the works undertaken by ELIF, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Now Minister. Now from Croatia over video, I call upon Her Excellency Nina Obluyan, Minister of Culture and Media. Madame la Ministre de la Culture, Monsieur le Ministre de l'Europe et des Affaires étrangères, Minister for Culture, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Executive Director of ALIF, ladies and gentlemen. I am very happy to be able to address you on behalf of Croatia. This is a country which has fortunately and unfortunately had a great experience in rehabilitation of cultural heritage in the face of multifaceted crises that we experienced in the past. I say unfortunately because for a number of decades now we have undergone significant destruction of our heritage due to natural disasters or due to the independence wars during the 90s. Luckily, we are now able to provide our support to international organizations and countries that need our support as we have done many times in the past. In my Europe, and also after the earthquakes in Italy. First of all, I would like to thank ALIF that has been with us since the last conference supporting international cooperation at European level to safeguard cultural heritage as part of the Croatian presidency of the European Union in February 2020. This was where we met for the very first time, and at the time, we did not realize the value of this new partnership. It, international cooperation and action to save heritage in conflict zones remains the core task. However, Alif was one of the first stakeholders to show their precious support after the earthquake in Zagreb in 2020. And here we would like to underline the great work and solidarity that this organization has shown. As some of you know, 2020 for us was a particularly difficult one. Beyond the global pandemic and all of what that meant, Croatia was hit by two earthquakes that hit the capital Zagreb and eight other cities in the north of the country. The solidarity that we experienced from a number of European Union countries and other international organizations showed us the scope and potential of global humanism. We experienced this humanism in the strongest way during the 90s during the independence war. Our cultural heritage had been looted or destroyed, and our experts were tasked with evacuating people and coordinating reconstruction. Our efforts were supported by international experts, and UNESCO declared the reconstruction of Dubrovnik to be one of the greatest examples of post-war reconstruction. These initiatives and others encouraged us to participate in the safeguarding of international cultural heritage furthermore. That is why we have undertaken a risk assessment task as part of our presidents of the European Union. And this is why we are continuing to strengthen our network with other stakeholders so long as ALIF, UNESCO and other organizations exist. 
No compromise can be accepted when it comes to protecting cultural heritage. This is about our identity, our history, and our future. And there must be concerted efforts, both politically and practically, but also financially. I am sure that having Arif as an ally will give us the necessary tools to overcome future challenges. Thank you. With that, we will pass to the representative from Greece, Her Excellency Lina Mendoni, Minister of Culture and Sports. Excellencies, we have all seen the images of the looting of archaeological sites and the robbing of museums taking place in war and conflict-affected countries around the world, becoming more common in the last decade, portraying in the most dramatic way the international criminal nature of the destruction of cultural heritage and <clears throat> the illicit trafficking of cultural property as an immediate consequence. However, the targeting of cultural heritage is in its various forms to, to pra a practice that affects all countries in both wartime and peacetime. The international community is becoming increasingly aware that the illicit trafficking of cultural goods is not merely an important issue for all countries, but is now recognized as an operation of the organized crime, the full consequence of which to cultural heritage are still uncharted. The characteristics of this age-long practice change quickly and adapt to the particular condition of each country and era. Greece, whose ancient remains have suffered repeated aggressions throughout its long history, has developed a <clears throat> multifaceted policy for the protection of cultural heritage. The country has ratified international conventions to the protection of cultural heritage, both during peacetime and in the case of armed conflict. Every three years, Greece drafts the EUN decision for the return or restitution of cultural property to the countries of origin, a pure Greek initiative which is uh, enormously adopted. In fact, at the recent UN General Assembly, this decision was co-sponsored by 111 states. As part of its multidimensional national strategy, Greece is actively involved in serving their national policy to prevent and combat the illicit trafficking of cultural goods through its participation in international fora, the transfer of how-know, know-how and good practices and forging synergy aim at preventing and countering the problem both in time of peace and war. The Hellenic Ministry of Culture and Sports implements a package of measures at institutional and operational level and uh, intensifies efforts for international cooperation by concluding bilateral and multilateral agreements. These agreements open new ways to cooperation and, above all, guarantee new practices that are gradually being adapted by an increasing number of countries around the world. ALIF emerges as yet another important tool in our common struggle. Greece, the Hellenic Republic, salutes the ALIF initiative and declares that it will actively endorse and support all efforts to safeguard and defend cultural heritage. The Memorandum of Cooperation signed today bears testament of to our will and determination to contribute to ALIF's goal by all suitable means. Thank you for the invitation to belong to the ALIF family. Thank you. And here was the point when His Excellency from Italy, Dario Franceschini, Minister of Culture, was going to address us. But given uh, the political situation in Italy, he was unable to attend. But he did send us his words. So I would like to invite to the stage my colleague, Andrea Balbo, who will read his statement for him. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank the government of the French Republic, and in particular, Minister Bachelot Narquin, for this invitation to participate in Alif's second Donors Conference. Above all, I would like to express my enthusiasm 
in participating in an initiative dedicated to a theme to which Italy has dedicated important energies for decades and which I myself have strongly supported and continue to support, namely the strategic value of the protection of cultural heritage in areas of crisis. Cultural heritage is a precious asset, the foundation of the identity of a people, and therefore part of the international dynamics of peace, and sadly so also of war, since the dawn of humanity. Cultural heritage also belongs to the whole humanity, and therefore all of humanity must strive to protect it. In this context, international collaboration, particularly in the multilateral sphere, represents the inevitable arena for any substantial progress. Recent efforts by Italy to put this issue at the center of the international agenda coincided, in particular, with the G20 culture exercise, with the Rome Declaration, to which France made an important contribution. There are many other dimensions of our multilateral engagement on this issue. Alongside France, we are happy to continue on these paths, which are substantiated, above all, this year, through the French presidency of the European Union, which Italy strongly supports. Italy addresses these issues primarily in the context of the United Nations and of UNESCO, thanks to which we have made enormous joint progress in order to include and then to strengthen the dimension of the protection of cultural heritage in international peacekeeping efforts. The ALIF initiative effectively complements the range of options for the international community to protect cultural heritage. It is an initiative that Italy has followed closely since the beginning, and which we have seen maturing thanks to the commitment of all those participating in today's event, and of the operators on the ground to whom I address a greeting and a thanks. In maturing, Alif has succeeded in supporting quality projects in countries that are important for the geopolitical balance of the Mediterranean and other sensitive areas, which Italy is monitoring with great attention. For this reason, it is an initiative that deserves our full attention. We particularly appreciate every way in which ALIF can enter into coordination with UNESCO, which remains the main institution and key point of reference for the international community to address these issues. Italy and the Ministry of Culture in particular are carefully evaluating the possibility of joining and concretely supporting ALIF, a choice that involves a number of entities within our government. Italy is at the beginning of a new political and institutional page of great importance. I can assure you that it will continue to look closely into ALIF and to evaluate the best ways to offer its support. I thank you and I wish you good work for today's program. Thank you, Andrea. And now, uh, over video from Morocco, please welcome His Excellency Mohamed Mehdi Ben Said, Minister of Youth, Culture and Communication. Madame la Ministre de la Culture de la République Française, Madam Minister, Mr. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Madam Minister for Culture, Madam Director General of UNESCO, I would like to address you this message with all of the gravitas that is required by the situation, and I would like to remind you of the unwavering commitment of the Kingdom of Morocco under Mohammed VI towards the protection of cultural heritage, especially in conflict areas. The Alif Foundation was created around an ambition, which is to bring hope where barbarity is present. And our desire is, we'll, we'll broke no concession 
We will continue to push through human and scientific means. Morocco will continue to implement everything to support this foundation. And under the chairmanship of King Mohammed VI, we'll continue to leverage its best experts and best know-how in protecting heritage. We wish to provide preventative measures to overcome crises in the future, be they related to armed conflict or natural disasters. And this through inventorying, working in museums, and supporting heritage sites, digitizing archaeological works, and the creation of crisis response scenarios. We're also committed to making our trainers available for museums and sites to help renovate key buildings such as mud buildings, especially in post-conflict areas. Fighting to save world heritage is not just about acting in the field and renovating in high-risk countries. We need to help some countries build up their legal framework to support the protection of cultural heritage, supporting collectors, activists, and fighting against looting and illegal trade. This is a fight that can only be fought through full respect of country's sovereignty. Terrorism, in its destructive madness, would deprive people of their present and their past. As countries isolate and protect themselves, multilateralism and international cooperation remains the only way through which we can overcome the difficult challenges that we face today. No need to remind you that culture is not just an expression of creation. It's also a projection of civilization. It is necessary for our minds and for our lives. It ties us to our past and links individuals and their community. Thank you. I'd like to now call upon from Oman, His Excellency Salim Mohammed al Mahrouki, Minister of Herod, Heritage and Tourism. Fakhamat al Rais Emmanuel Macron, Rai Hadal Mutamar, Ashab al Maali, Ashab al Saada, Al Hodor al Karim, Yasurni Bidayatan. أن أنقل إليكم تحيات صاحب الجلالة السلطان هيثم بن طارق المعظم حفظه الله. I'm delighted to extend the greetings of my authorities and I wish you the very best of success in your work and I wish you all success in achieving the objectives of this alliance as well as the assurance that we support uh, you in these efforts uh, to protect cultural heritage, the efforts to conserve uh, the achievements of humankind. This heritage is threatened by conflicts in many parts of the world. We see a continuous illicit trafficking of cultural goods. And this means that we need to be more vigilant. We need to, to intensify our cooperation amongst different countries, but also with specialized organizations at regional level. The challenges will last, and therefore we have to act at various levels so that civil society can get better organized itself to protect cultural heritage, because these civil societies actually depend on this cultural heritage not just culturally, but also economically. Within this framework, it's important to pursue coordination and cooperation of our countries with UNESCO, with international community more than ever today, needs to stress its commitments, its pledges. It needs to devote resources and endeavors in the period leading up to a potential conflict uh, 
support has been given to uh, dozens of projects uh, of both tangible and intangible heritage. The work done together has heightened awareness and shown the importance uh, we attach uh, to this heritage. Of course, all of this requires political determination. And political determination implies a respect of cultural heritage all over the world. We need to recognize uh, the benefits in economic and cultural terms of this heritage. In uh, Oman, we support strongly this coalition and our work and financially as well. And we wish all of those who work within Aleph the and very best Portugal, of success. And from Portugal, joining us over video is His Excellency Francisco André, Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs and Cooperation. Your Excellency Jean-Yves Rodrien, Minister of Europe and Foreign Affairs of France, Honorable Ministers, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to begin by thanking the French government for hosting this donors conference in a place as symbolic as the Louvre the largest museum in the world and the Universal Center for the Study and Appreciation of some of humanity's greatest artistic legacies and historical achievements. This is particularly, a particularly appropriate venue for the gathering of the Second Donors Conference of the International Alliance for the Protection of Heritage in Conflict Areas. Not only is the museum a testament to the power and relevance of cultural heritage, but is also at its collections imperiled by the destructive forces of the conflict, particularly during the Second World War. Fortunately, this was a story with a happy ending. We study the past to understand the present to create the future is a basic tenet of the work of any museum in the world, and it is true. The past is our own too. It provides a scenario to the stage where our lives unfold and it sheds light on our ever evolving identities, both collective and individual. The importance of cultural heritage in our society is paramount and has been brought to the limelight by a successful combination of initiatives across the world, including governments, the private sector and civil society, in a process of growth which goes on until today. I would like to recall that in 1954, 193 states ratified the UNESCO A Convention recognizing that damage to cultural property belonging to any people whatsoever means damage to the cultural heritage of all mankind since each people makes its contribution to the culture of the world. Since 2003, the loss of globally important cultural property in zones of armed conflict has led to ever louder calls for protecting cultural heritage endangered by violence. There is now a keen awareness of how irreplaceable lost cultural property is and how its absence impacts on any given community. Cultural property and heritage can be essential in post-conflict stabilization and reconciliation efforts also with the potential to promote intercultural dialogue and to contribute to economic development through tourism. The work carried out by ALIP in this field in the past five years is impressive and it deserves our full endorsement. Yet the challenges are great too in different areas of the globe. Much remains to be done. The Portuguese government strongly supports ALIP and its smart and agile management model, which has shown to have valuable results. We also commend the partnership model implemented by the Alliance and expect it to continue to expand its network of international partners. I sincerely hope the discussions on the future 2023-2027 strategy will bring in renewed international commitment, a fresh sense of purpose and a clear vision regarding the joint safeguard of human heritage, which is indeed our common duty. Thank you very much. And now we pass to the other representatives on this part of the program. So from Hungary, I would like to call upon His Excellency Balint Odor, Ambassador to the EU Political and Security Committee. Madame la Ministre, Mesdames et Messieurs les Ministres, Excellences, chers invités, Mesdames et Messieurs, on behalf of the Hungarian Minister for Foreign Affairs, Peter Sviato, I would like to say that I'm very grateful for this invitation, and I'd like to thank Alip and the ministers of France for having organized this key conference and invited us to Paris to this magnificent museum. Let me recall my first meeting uh, with the executive director, Mr. Freyland, last year. 
the Hungarian permanent representation in Brussels organized a, a roundtable conference on the protection of cultural heritage together with the European External Action Service uh, with France, Germany, Poland, Slovenia, the European Commission, UNESCO and ALIF, uh, which was one of the uh, key participants in the conference. Mr. Frelon gave an inspiring presentation on the very concrete projects ALIF is implementing. One of his key messages was action, action, action. Obviously, we can but agree with the need for action in conflict areas to protect cultural heritage and to reconstruct it in a sustainable and resilient manner. We need to take action to preserve tangible and also intangible cultural heritage. In that respect, intercultural dialogue and interfaith dialogue can serve as a means to promote mutual understanding and reconciliation in post-conflict situations as well. Allow me to attract the attention to a new EU concept and a new EU approach in the area of cultural heritage in conflict areas. Last June, the EU Council adopted a new position in the form of conclusions enlarging the EU external toolbox with objectives very similar to those of ALIF and also other agencies like Hungary Helps. Hungry Helps is a government program for humanitarian assistance and development cooperation. Regarding the new EU concept, the Council conclusions provides a political framework for concrete action. What could the next steps uh, in the of implementation be? Well, I think there are two ways of proceeding. One is to encourage member states and relevant organizations like ALIF to continue their work with their projects, and the other is to launch similar projects, uh, partly or fully funded by the EU, through the NDICI or other instruments. For Hungary, cooperation with ALIF is valuable because Hungary helps has many points and interests in common with ALIF, both in principle and practice and its missions. The fundamental principle of Hungary's efforts is to assist crisis-affected communities to remain and prosper in their homelands and to enable a dignified return for refugees and displaced persons, those who have been displaced by terrorist activities and wars. An explicit but not an exclusive aim of the Hungarian efforts is to enable Christians persecuted or discriminated against because of their faith to preserve their identity and their tangible and intangible heritage and to remain and prosper in their homeland. Our principle is to take into consideration, first and foremost, the wishes of the local communities. We take into account their aspirations, and when we implement them, it's with strong local cooperation. Since 2017, Hungary has supported 190 humanitarian and rehabilitation projects in 50 countries worldwide. The total budget was 70 million euros. This meant that we could help more than 500,000 people to return or remain in their homeland. Just one example I'd like to give in Iraq. We funded the reconstruction of whole villages, and our experience was that with a relatively small budget, you could get impressive results. We provided vital help to local communities. This is why we think that Hungary Helps could cooperate closely with Alif on the basis of a memorandum of understanding so that we could launch co-finance concrete projects in the future. It's my pleasure to announce that I've signed a framework memorandum of understanding with the executive director of Alif, Valérie Frelon. Let me conclude by another announcement. Hungary is organizing a conference on the occasion of the one-year anniversary of the adoption of the Council conclusions on the protection of cultural heritage. This will be next June in Brussels. The focus will be on the exchange of member states' best practice on implemented projects and opportunities of cooperation with the Commission and uh, uh, the EAS. I hope that we'll be able to meet there. Thank you for the possibility of addressing you this message here. From Kuwait, I call upon His Excellency Sami Mohammed Al Suleiman, Ambassador to France. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, may I at the outset 
thank and greet you. I would like to greet you on behalf of the Foreign Affairs uh, Minister of Kuwait. We wish um, every success for this key conference which aims to protect endangered world heritage in conflict areas. Major efforts must be made to protect monuments, historic sites, and to restore them. I would like also to thank the French government for having organized this major conference. I would also like to thank Alif for the outstanding work that it has done with its programs uh, in situations of urgency. More than 150 projects in about 30 countries. I think those figures are impressive and show the huge efforts that have been taken to protect both tangible and intangible heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, this conference is particularly important. And our country attaches huge importance uh, to the protection of world heritage. This heritage is uh, the collection of all of our individual contributions to uh, the heritage of humankind. A major conference was organized in Abu Dhabi in 2017. And my country announced that it would make a contribution of $50 million at the first conference in 2017 so that we could show in tangible form our support to Alif. My country, together with the countries of the Gulf, works tirelessly to conserve the monuments in our region. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue our efforts to conserve the heritage of humankind and to protect our monuments. And we launch an appeal for cooperation with all international organizations to do so. Kuwait took part in the conference on reviving the spirit of Mosul in 2018. It was held at UNESCO's headquarters here in Paris, following on from a conference organized by Kuwait, uh, the aim of which was uh, to rebuild Iraq. We gave a large sum of, America, of money to help Iraq rebuild. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many tensions worldwide and crises in many places. The first victims are human beings. The second are uh, heritage sites. Terrorist groups such as Al-Qaeda, Daesh, are unbelievably aggressive. They have committed crimes against our history. They have targeted museums and other cultural sites in Iraq, in Yemen, in Afghanistan, in Syria, and other countries besides. By way of conclusion, I would say that my country will continue to work to ensure that we can protect cultural heritage, and we will stand by Alif in its work. Thank you. From Luxembourg, I'd like to call upon Her Excellency Martine Chomer, Ambassador to France and Monaco, and Permanent Delegate to UNESCO. Ladies and gentlemen, ministers, President, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg uh, supports Alif and has done since its beginnings in 2017. 
and is delighted that it has been able to thus make a contribution to the setting up of this unique organization for cultural heritage, and through that uh, to help uh, populations in conflict areas and post-conflict zones. Since the beginning, Alif has financed or co-funded 150 projects gradually. Uh, the projects have become more diversified in terms of content and also the kind of support provided, but also regarding geographical coverage. The expertise and know-how of the Secretariat with its director has been increased uh, with closer uh, follow-up of projects despite problems encountered on the ground. The scientific committee has done some impressive work in selecting the most promising projects in terms of heritage and in terms of their impact. Alif doesn't just contribute to the conservation and the safeguard of heritage, but also to the rebuilding of peace between countries and between communities. It is an instrument for foreign policy and to strengthen humanism. My country feels that this is indispensable. And this is the reason why Luxembourg wishes uh, to support uh, the 2327 strategy of Alif, in addition to providing continuous political support. We want to provide additional financial support. We need uh, to consider this. Uh, uh, in the light of the amounts already provided in the first five years of Alif's activity. Thank you very much for your attention. From Monaco, I call upon Ms. Isabel Rosa Brunetto, Director General, Department of External Relations and Cooperation. Altes, Excellence. Mr. President. Excellencies, President, ladies and gentlemen, the situation is unfortunately all too clear. Actions launched by armed groups uh, spread terror and destroy human lives. But these are not the only victims, unfortunately. These fanatics uh, make looting and the destruction of heritage part and parcel of their warfare. It's a continuation of the persecution against uh, populations. The same objective is to destroy what existed, erase all remains of our shared history, wipe out traces of cultural diversity. In addition to this, there are uh, climate disasters, ever more numerous. These are the challenges. I'd like to thank France and the United Arab Emirates and all those who joined them so quickly to have taken the initiative to put in place the International Coalition to Protect uh, uh, Threatened Heritage, Alif. My country has initiated a partnership with the foundation. This was done two years ago, and we supported two projects, the Raqqa Museum in Syria and the restoration of frescoes in the St. Anthony Church in Dede in Lebanon. We are delighted with this cooperation. We have followed very closely the action reports of the foundation, which show how agile it is. As so many people have recognized, including President Macron of France. The word agility is often referred to cooperation of Monaco with other countries, and therefore I think we are bound to get on well. I would not wish to conclude without announcing that uh, we intend to renew our support to the Ali Foundation and double our contribution, which up until now has been quite small, but will increase, so we're moving in the right direction. And finally, take advantage of this opportunity to welcome the work done by UNESCO in safeguarding and restoring uh, cultural heritage. Monaco has taken part in recent initiatives that to help Mosul and Beirut. I hope in this wonderful setting, which testifies to so many rich civilizations, I voice the hope that we will be more and more numerous and united in protecting together the treasures of our shared heritage. I wish uh, long life to Alif. Shukran. Thank you very much indeed. From the Netherlands, I call upon Her Excellency Duvi van der Veerd, Ambassador for International Cultural Cooperation.
Good evening, um, uh, Your Excellencies, uh, uh, Ministers, um, Madame uh, la Présidente du Louvre, uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Director of Alif, thank you. Thank you very much to the French government uh, to convening this meeting tonight in support of the International Alliance for the Protection of Heritage and Conflict Areas, Alif. It is an honor to speak to you today on behalf of the Netherlands. As many of you have already pointed out, our global cultural heritage has increasingly become under threat of violence in recent years. Safeguarding this heritage passed on to us by so many generations before us is a collective responsibility which requires our active commitment. Culture and cultural heritage are essential elements in post-disaster and post-conflict reconstruction and reconciliation, although this is not yet fully recognized everywhere. By protecting our heritage, we are protecting more than just buildings, traditions, or objects. We are protecting a shared history of our identities. Because losing our cultural heritage is losing our collective memory, which forms the essence of what unites us as humans. Alif's important work on the protection of cultural heritage worldwide has been very welcome and a much needed addition uh, to the efforts undertaken already by UNESCO and the other organizations. And it was such a pleasure today, this afternoon, to see all these examples of the important work that Alif has been doing, these 150 projects worldwide, and I'm really impressed. And I would like to congratulate the whole team uh, of, of, of Valerie and, uh, and, and Thomas with all this really valuable and important work. In a few years since the foundation, Alif has been able to do a tremendous amount, and um, I think it is very clear that still a lot needs to be done. The Netherlands has specifically also appreciated Alif's support and collaboration with the Dutch Prince Klaas Fund's Cultural Emergency Re uh, Response Program, the SER. With Alif's support, SER has been able to provide local support to cultural emergencies on the ground from Beirut to Cameroon. In many places, they have been cooperating together. And this local and action-oriented approach is what makes Alif such a valuable partner. On behalf of the Netherlands, I would therefore like to express our ongoing political support to Alif and to the important work that you are doing. And we look forward to continue our cooperation with you in the coming years, combining our efforts in safeguarding our global cultural heritage for future generations. Thank you very much. From Switzerland, I call upon Her Excellency Muriel berset cohen Ambassador, Permanent Delegate to UNESCO. Madame le Ministre, Madame la Ministre. Madame Minister, Minister, President of Alif, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of our Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Osiakis, who couldn't be with us this evening, uh, who is now our President of the Swiss Confederation, I would like to say that Switzerland is delighted to support Alif. I would like, in fact, to congratulate Alif for all of the work that has been done since it was created, for all of the actions undertaken, for all of the energy that I also witnessed today. We are delighted that Alif is being hosted at the World Multilateral Center in Geneva, which is, of course, the epicenter of humanitarian law. I'm not going to go back over everything that has already been said eloquently on armed conflict, on destruction of cultural heritage, and on the reasons behind this destruction, but I may add in the spirit of humanitarian aid that we must make sure that these acts do not remain unpunished. We must support the defenders of cultural rights who took risks to protect what could be protected. And we must support the communities in the regions that are affected. Many have already said just how important restoration and rehabilitation, respectful rehabilitation of cultural sites, returning cultural items home, and respect of cultural customs can help the process of reconciliation and peace. Switzerland is delighted that Alif has stepped up as one of the most effective actors in renovation and rehabilitation of cultural heritage. Switzerland is 
fully willing to continue its cooperation with the Foundation as part of our past cooperation, and my country has just renewed its support for Alif. Thank you for your attention. From the European External Action Service, Monsieur Stefano Tomat, Director of Integrated Approach for Peace and Security, is joining us by video conference. No? Wait. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak in this very important debate. I would like to join the previous speakers in congratulating Elif for the fantastic work that has been done in the protection and rehabilitation of cultural heritage. The protection of cultural heritage is, of course, a priority in the external actions of the European Union. And by cultural heritage, the first thing that comes to mind is the tangible things, but also the intangible side of cultural heritage, moral traditions, or transmission of know-how. We support a number of projects related to cultural heritage in countries around the world. And as representative of the Vice President of the European Union, I often give political addresses on this topic. As the Ambassador Odor de Long from Hungary said, our approach to security and peace has led us in Brussels to develop a European approach to cultural heritage in conflict zones and during crises. This concept is an important part of our consultation process with various stakeholders, civil society and international organizations, and I would like to underline the important role that Arif played as part of these processes. We also reached a number of conclusions at council level that were adopted by the Ministers of Foreign Affairs in June 2021. We now have two key documents, concepts and conclusions. Supported by the member states and institutions, these documents not only recognize that cultural heritage is a key part in the peace process, but also provide an operational framework, a clear operational framework, framework for concrete actions by the European Union for peace and cultural heritage. So we have a clear political and operational framework, as I described. Now we need to work together for implementation, and that is always the harder part. On our side, in the European community, we have integrated cultural heritage as part of our policy for the shared security policy. And we wish to include cultural heritage as part of our initiatives and missions for security and defense. Our assistance mission in Iraq is a good example of this. We have a special assignation dedicated to cultural heritage as part of our operational presence in the field. This is coordinated with the Ministry for the Interior, National Security Services, and also with the Ministry for Culture as part of the fight against organized crime and part of the fight against illegal trade. This also supports the creation of a national database for the preservation of cultural heritage. And there are other European Union missions that are active around the world protecting cultural heritage, such as in Georgia or Lebanon, Libya, excuse me. We've also integrated cultural heritage as part of other relative documents, such as our approach to climate change and also our preventative diplomatic tools such as early warning systems. These cultural heritage components are included in our mediation and diplomatic approaches as well. We wish to significantly contribute to the protection of the prote cultural heritage and therefore we need to maintain cooperation with partners. Strengthening these partnerships with international organizations is at the heart of our international relations policy. 
And I would like to underline here the importance of the relationship that we have with Alif. We have been maintaining dialogue and exchange and cooperation. And together, we can identify the path forward to consistently protect cultural heritage. The European Union, just as Alif, works to protect cultural heritage around the world. As you know, the European Union has projects in Yemen, in Mali, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Central Asia. And therefore, it is necessary that, as a European Union, as member states, and as international organizations, that we take a Europe-wide approach and coordinate in the field to maximize the impact of what we do. I would like to wrap up by saying that our work on protecting cultural heritage in conflict zones will continue and will continue for years with strong cooperation with our friends and colleagues at Adif. Thank you once again for the invitation, and I wish you a fruitful rest of the day. And now we pass to the last part of the pledging and support section, which is our private donors. So Dr. Thomas Kaplan has already made his announcement of his continued support, and for that we thank him wholeheartedly. And I would like to call to the stage now Mr. Monsieur Jacques Emmanuel Saunier from the Total Energies Foundation. Madame, uh, Madame la Ministre, Messieurs les Ministres. Madam Minister, Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real honor for me to be with you this evening as we celebrate the five years of the Adif Foundation. And of course, I would like to say on behalf of Total Energy uh, that we truly congratulate you on what you've achieved. The Total Energy Foundation has long been involved in the fight to protect cultural heritage. They anchor our people and our companies, and they anchor uh, peace and culture, pride in, from our communities, and are a source of jobs for young people. The Total Energy Foundation is proud to support the upcoming five-year program for Elif, and therefore to contribute in rounding out the 150 projects that have already been launched in these highly damaged regions. Total Energy is the first company to join this initiative. Thank you for welcoming us. And of course, we hope that we will be forerunners and that others will follow in the same path alongside you. Mesdames et Ministres et Monsieur, merci infiniment pour votre soutien. Je passe sans attendre la parole pour clôturer cette conférence à Madame Roselyne Bachelot-Narquin, Ministre de la Culture. Madame la Ministre. Bonsoir à tous et à toutes. Good evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, ministers, ambassadors, president of the foundation of Alif, Thomas Kaplan, Madame Director General of the Louvre, Laurence Jacques Lang. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it really is a delight to see you once again here in the Corsabad room here at the Louvre. I see, I say see you again because the very first donors conference was held in this very room five years ago. And I have to say that I'm impressed with what's been done since. First of all, Laurence Descartes, I would like to thank you for hosting us and thank you for your involvement in serving this cause. I would also like to thank all of the teams especially the Alif teams that stepped up to make sure that this conference could happen. So indeed, dear friends, I'm very happy to see so many of you here tonight, and I know that many people have been tuned in remotely. 
Your presence is a strong and beautiful message that our engagement is not weakening. In fact, the opposite is true. And we now have new allies in our fight to protect cultural heritage in conflict zones and in post-conflict regions. I would like to warmly commend Alif that has been able to show in just a few years just how relevant, useful and effective it can be. Indeed, alongside UNESCO, which is part of the governance structure in Alif, we have more than 150 projects that have been funded in 30 countries from Africa to Asia, Europe and Latin America. The witness accounts that we heard today from people, I won't mention them all, Assam Nadem, the Iraqi um, Minister for Culture, Jacques Long, one of the father figures for Alif and the president of the Institute of the Arab World in Paris, reinforce my conviction that we must continue along this path. The second donors conference is a resounding success. The targets that we set have been achieved and in fact, we've gone well beyond. If I count correctly, we are at $90 million at this point, but we've also heard a number of countries, including in the EU, that they are looking into joining us. That means that the, we have not yet achieved our ceiling of countries or of donors. Of course, thank you. This has been the opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to protecting cultural heritage, especially in conflict areas where this heritage has a key role to play in the peace process. Of course, we have contributed to strengthening dialogue between countries, between cultures on the topic of protecting and safeguarding our shared wealth that is cultural heritage. In many regions around the world, that wealth is being threatened by ideologies or conflicts, people who see cultural heritage as an enemy. We have reaffirmed the necessity to protect cultural heritage. We owe this to the men and women for whom cultural heritage is a keystone. And we owe this to the younger generations. We should be happy for the international cooperation that has emerged from this necessity. And also, the second donors conference has been the opportunity to include more European partners. As you know, France will be holding the presidency of the European Union for half of the year. As part of this, we wish to strengthen the feeling of belonging in the European space. And heritage is, of course, a central component of that. In fact, tomorrow, we will be organizing a conference on European coordination in the fight against illegal trade of cultural goods right here in the Louvre, and with the Director General of Alif and UNESCO that will be there, representatives from the European Commission and European countries who have a legacy of being involved in the fight to protect endangered heritage. Finally, this conference has enabled us to garner financial and political support that will make a difference as Alif continues to act. This is a key moment, as this will be the anchor through which Alif will be able to have sustainable actions alongside its technical, institutional and scientific partners, first and foremost UNESCO. We've also been able to identify further things that can be done, such as increasing mobilization of our heritage operators who are empowered by the increasing notoriety of Alif. We need to strengthen our work with the countries that are the first affected because without them, no concrete action can be done. What has been done in Iraq is a good illustration of this. And on these two things, Alif is looking to actively contribute to strengthen synergies between operators in countries, including countries at war. 
Dear friends, as Minister for Culture in France, I would once again like to underline our full support to Alif and to its president, Mr. Tom Kaplan. France is alongside you as we go about this noble undertaking of protecting cultural heritage and building peace. And I would like to thank, finally, a woman who was discreet today. She didn't speak at the podium. However, she has been doing so much over the last five years for Alif, and our foundation owes a lot to her. This is Barry Zakiari, advisor to the President for Heritage in Conflict Zones and Vice Chairwoman of Alif. Dear Bariza, I would like to invite you to come up to the stage with me and to say a few words. This wasn't on the plan, but you deserve this limelight. That is what Elif is also all about. Stories of men and women who have a passion for heritage, a beautiful human adventure. Thank you. Merci, merci, madame. Merci, Madame la Ministre. Je suis Thank you, Madam Minister. I'm all the more touched that, according to protocol, you wouldn't speak after a minister as they give the closing address. So thank you for that gesture. And I think this is a sisterly gesture, and that touches me all the more because of it. Everything has already been said by everyone and so well that I honestly don't know what I can say. I'm really surprised. Now, of course, Elif. Elif is an approach. Elif is a philosophy. When I met with Mohammed Mubarak, my counterpart from the UAE, we co-founded Elif together. He asked me one thing. He said, do you trust? And I said, yes. I looked him in the eyes and I said, yes. And he said, then I do too. But he had a request to avoid bureaucracy. So we agreed on doing away with bureaucracy. But I said, bureaucracy doesn't mean that we shouldn't be demanding. So we set this up as a startup with an ability to quickly react. And that is thanks to Valérie Froland, who is a tireless worker day and night. He toils away for Alif and his team as well, a fantastic team. And secondly, the board. Alif's board under Tom Kaplan, which is the place where we decided the following thing a short-circuit approach. That means that when we ask the board for something, they have a few days to get back to us, or we take it as a yes. And that works. That really does work. So thank you, Tom, for that. Thank you, Antoine, who's right next to you. That's fantastic. And thank you to the scientific committee as well, with Jean-Luc Martinez, who is working there. The, the answers we get for them are almost in real time. So those three components of our toolbox work together, they work fast, and that is how we have been able to achieve that agility and our ability to respond to crisis situations. And then you've got philosophy and ethics. In a room like this, we all realize that we've come a long way. And we all have multiple identities. In a room like this, when we rehabilitate heritage, we, we might say to a young person that repairing something in your home in Iraq, it's a bit Babylonian, a little bit Sumerian, a little bit Jewish, a little bit Christian, a little bit Muslim. And that young person realizes that their identity has a lot behind it. And when they realize that, they can go beyond their own identity. That identity is not set in stone. It's not a single identity. And when you're no longer straitjacketed by a single identity, you can welcome others in. And that is the beginning of understanding one another. This 
that philosophy, those ethics are what guide us here at Elif. And as the President of the Republic said, it helps people reconcile sometimes with themselves. Thank you, Madam Minister, for giving me the opportunity to speak. I wasn't expecting it. And once again, thank you for that very sisterly gesture because women get it done and we let it be known. But sometimes we could improve on that second part. Thank you.